Thank you. Uh, you know what? For if, if folks were deputized to hand them out, thank you, and thank you for organizing that. But I'm, this is the year of the pivot. So if you, I, I think we won't need them, actually. But thank you. And thank you, Rachel. Shana Tova, Gamar Hatima Tova. There's something very strange, it strikes me, at the heart of the day. For if I were to ask you to design a day which was centered around introspection and reflection of the year that was, taking stock, thinking back, thinking about what our highest ideals are, thinking about what does it look like when I am uh, my best self. Thinking about that, and then thinking about how I am stacking up against that, and thinking about committing towards moving forward, changing a certain behavior, working on a certain relationship, so if that's what we wanted out of a holy day, perhaps the holiest day, what would such a day look like? In fact, I will pose that to you as a question. Any takers? If you were designing the holiest day of the year, a day of deep reflection, introspection, thinking about what was and committing to moving forward, not to mention the entire spiritual, theological level of however you relate to this, thinking about God and all of that, what would such a day look like? What would you do on such a day? Thoughts? There's no wrong answers. It's your day that you're creating. By the way, if you come up with a good day, you, you should create this day. But anyway, what do we got? We can wait. No one's eating dinner tonight. What's your name? Josh, yes, please. Beautiful. I appreciate that reflection. Peace and quiet. Uh, Lila, and then I can't tell who's sitting next to you. Hey, Lauren. Shana Tova. I think what I'm going to do, thank you. I think I prefer to write songs to others. Ooh. People hear what Lila said. You've got to be by a running, by water, a river or an ocean. Love that. Lauren. I would do some meditation. Meditation. I, I feel a theme. I detect a theme from those first three answers. They, the vibes that I'm getting are very good. Very good vibes from those three answers. Peace and quiet by water, meditation, very good. Someone in the back raised their hand? Yeah. Love that. And, and that, that, sorry, what was your name? David. David. That also works very nicely with, uh, David said, whatever I want to do in this coming year, I should do today to s set the tone. And that is a deeply Jewish idea that we really talk about that a lot on Rosh Hashanah, which we, we want a sweet new year, so we eat apples. Perfectly rational and logical and scientific approach. Whatever I want in the next year, let's start off on that foot. Great. Other thoughts? These are great answers. Please. Beautiful. Some sort of writing or journaling or a letter looking forward and then also getting, if you 
that becomes a practice. You can see where you were at last year. Beautiful idea. Yes. Oh, I like that. Being with family, being with community, being with friends, and I think that's a nice tension to raise between the individual and the collective, which is certainly a tension that runs through Yom Kippur and probably we could say more broadly in Judaism. Okay, those were fantastic, and I encourage folks for whom those are your answers and anyone else who didn't add to pursue those things uh, that give you that sense of meaning. So we had, a nice, we had a nice description of this day. And yet, what does this day look like in Jewish tradition? We spend many hours in synagogue reciting or singing or listening to medieval acrostics in a language that most of us do not understand, uh, written m many of these uh, PUT in medieval poems, written in an era where the problems and issues that Jews of that time were dealing with are dissimilar and in certain ways unrelatable to our own. If you look through and read through, some of the al the acrostics, some of them can be hard to connect with. And this Moxor we have now at least updates some of them. But in terms of bribery and usury, if any of you do have a problem of violating bribery and usury, come see me after and we can talk about it. But my point simply is that from the ideas and words that people offered for what would be an ideal day of meaning and reflection, what the Yom Kippur that we inherited, I think can be more difficult to break into and to mine as easily for the meaning and connection that we might seek. There is a parable offered by Kafka, the 19th century sort of pre-existentialist or proto-existentialist poet, which I'd like to read, and I read every year on Yom Kippur, and I'll read it a couple of times so that you can sit with it. Here we go. It's two sentences long, so don't fret. Leopards the animal, leopards. Leopards break into the temple and drink to the dregs what is in the sacrificial pitchers. This is repeated over and over again. Finally, it can be calculated in advance and it becomes a part of the ceremony. I'll say that again. Leopards break into the temple and drink to the dregs what is in the sacrificial pitchers. This is repeated over and over again. Finally, it can be calculated in advance and it becomes a part of the ceremony. Let's just make sure we understand what Kafka is saying here. By the way, he is not describing Yom Kippur or necessarily a Jewish service. This is simply a reflection that I am choosing to bring to this conversation that I think is relevant. Leopards break into the sanctuary. So we're in, we're in synagogue right now, as it were. So imagine, leopards break in. I don't know which, ex it's hard to exactly imagine where they would come in from. Let's presume the back and they Leopards come into this room as we're sitting here. Uh, what's the emotion that that, how would you feel were that to happen right now? Scared? That's probably a dominant one. Any others? Shock? 
Say again. Confusion. What was that? Panic. The leopards come to the front of the temple. And in this particular temple of whatever religion he's describing, there's pitchers in the front of the room filled with wine. And the leopards come and drink that wine. Now that wine, presumably in this service of whatever religion we're imagining, is what? Sacred. Holy. It's there. It's, they're going to use that for something in the service. But the leopards, the Vildechaias that they are, that was a little Yiddish for anyone who appreciates it. Vildechaia literally means wild animal. It is only used, certainly in my house, to describe my children. The leopards come and they drink the sacrificial wine. So now if you're in this service and you're watching this and you've gotten over the panic, shock, fear, how are you feeling when they drink that wine, which is sacred to you? So how does that feel? Say again. Ah, what's your name? Linda. Linda. You're getting... You're getting, you're getting ahead of where I want. Yes, before then, what's your maybe pr immediate reaction? So we have a term which is called sacrilege, which is when something sacred is violated. So I, that's how I am, that's what I think Kafka is, I could be wrong, that there's a moment where they're violate, this is, this is a violation of our sacred and holy thing. But then what happens? The leopards leave. And everyone's like, whoa, that was pretty wild. And they talk about how the leopards came in. Next week, same time, same service, what happens? The leopards come back. And the same thing happens. This time, how are people feeling? probably less shocked, maybe less fearful, less panicked. They drink the pitchers and they leave. And it happens again and again and again. Kafka concludes, finally, it can be calculated in advance and it becomes part of the ceremony. This is, I think, how Linda, where, what Linda was pointing to. These feelings of fear, panic. There's another one which we didn't say, which I don't know if everyone would experience this, were leopards to come in here, but it would be, I would offer as awe, A-W-E, in the truest sense of something being awesome, which is a fine line from being awful, but there's an awe when leopards come in. And part of that is, is being afraid and being fearful. It's overwhelming. This is an experience that does not happen every day or every week. And it shatters our sense of what is normal. It shatters what's our sense of what is possible. And yet, when it happens with regularity, even what is amazing and awesome and verging maybe on terror, those emotions, when they be become routinized, can become integrated. And Kafka, in a by the way, that's the entire piece that I read for you. And he doesn't then expound upon it. You could take it in a variety of ways. So this is one way to understand this poem. That even something that's so amazing and awesome can become routinized, can become part of the routine, can become something that when we see it, we no longer experience it as awesome 
and amazing and overwhelming, but instead it becomes part of the service. And you can write it down in a book. And then you write poems about that thing. And then a thousand years pass and you're sitting in Irvine Hall and reading the words from a thousand years ago of something that happened thousands of years prior that spoke at some point to something awesome. Something that can really puncture our sense of what is possible. Something that can puncture our sense of reality. So that is our great challenge on Yom Kippur. Really, I think it's a challenge for all of Judaism, but we feel it very sharply. Certainly, I feel it very sharply on Yom Kippur. Namely, we have this incredible, awesome opportunity, which is to take a full day without distractions. That's why no eating. That's why wearing certain clothing. Why in traditional Judaism, no traveling, no writing. Many today don't use screens or electricity. No distractions for a full day so we can spend that entire time thinking about ourselves and our lives. And part and parcel of that is that in Jewish life and Jewish thought, we believe in something called tshuva, which is part of what uh, this all has been alluding to, is the notion that we can radically change our lives, should we so choose. For me, that is the awesome, that is the leopard's breaking into the temple, is the idea that all of us here can change. We can actually change things in our life. You might be sitting there thinking, that is leopards breaking into the temple, that I can change something in my life. If you are thinking that, if you are someone who has the power uh, to change those things in your life that need to be changed, the relationships that need to be worked on, the ways of being, acting, responding in certain situations, the way you approach members of your family, the way that you speak with friends, the way that you deal with social media, the way that you understand your future professional life, the way that you deal with homework when you get it. If you're someone who easily is able to identify these problems in your own life and immediately change and pivot, as we would say in traditional Hebrew, Ashrecha, you are fortunate. And I encourage, you to, I encourage you to continue on that path and you should have great success in doing so. For the rest of us, indeed, change is very difficult. What's my proof text? This would be a good time to look at the letter that we wrote ourselves last year to see what it was that we were struggling with and what we wanted to change and to see that, lo and behold, many of the things I was struggling with are still with me. So we've got 24 hours, less than that at this point. Don't worry, I've, I'm keeping track. To think deeply 
And some of that work will be done individually. Some of it will be done in community. And one of the beauties of Judaism is we can be doing individual work in a group space. And one of the central tools is this machzor. And my advice slash plea is to see this as a tool to the degree that it helps you, to the degree that it helps you do this introspective meditative work of thinking about yourself and your relationships, your relationship to yourself, your relationship to Judaism, your relationship to God, your relationship to others, to the degree that this and the page numbers that I'm calling out and Cantor Emma's chanting, to the degree that all of that helps you in that journey, great, keep it up. But at the moment that any of those things become a block to you having as meaningful an experience as you need to have, you should certainly put this down, close your eyes. There's, all, there's also some other reading materials out in the lobby, you can grab those. You can also just look at other pages. You can find readings and reflections on the sides of this machzor. There's no one right way to get there, but to the degree possible, I wish you all at least some moments on this Yom Kippur where you're able to tune back into the leopards breaking in to the temple, where you're able to tune into a feeling, a moment of awe, of radical amazement and renewal and the possibility of what you and your life can mean and look like in this next year. And we're all in it together. So uh, we have each other's backs in that process. With that, we will turn now to page 246 as we rise for the Alenu prayer. Alenu le shabayach la dohon hakol la tet gedula li otze hebreshit shelo asanu kigoye haratzot velo samanu kemishpachot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vegor alenu kechol hamonam Va'anachnu korim, u'mishtachavim, u'modim. L'fnei melech, moche ha'mlachim, ha'kadosh baruch hu. Shehuna teshamayim ve'yosen ha'aretz, u'moshav ikaro b'shamayim imaha. U'shkina tuzo, u'shkina tuzo, begov he'meh rohomim. Hu Eloheinu Eheinon, Hamed Malkinu Efesulato, Kakatu Betorato, Vedata Hayom, Vedata Hayom, Vehashevota, Eleva Vecha, Ki Adonai, Hu Elohim, Basha Hamayim, Imahal, Veal Haaretz, Veal Haaretz, Mi. Read in quietly, bottom of page 246. Kakatu vator tachar unayim loch leolaham va'el v'ne'emar v'haya Adonai l'melech al kol ha'aretz b'yom ha'hu b'yom ha'hu yeh Adonai echad u'shemo ho u'shemo ho u'shemo 
will recite on page 247 the Mourner's Kaddish, thinking about those who are currently in mourning and those observing a yurt site. Page 247. Yit kadal v'yit shemei rabah b'yalma divrach yirutei v'yamlich malchutei b'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael ba'agala v'zman kari v'imru amen yehe shmei rabah mevorach li'olam alamei almaya Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit ramam v'yit nase v'yit adar v'yit alev v'yit alal shmei d'kudasha b'richu le'ela le'ela mikol b'rchata v'shirata tush b'chata v'nechemata d'amiran b'yalma v'imru amen yehe shlama raba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu v'yal kol yisrael v'imru amen osei shalom b'mromav hu yaseh shalom aleinu v'yal kol yisrael v'imru amen Page 248, the special psalm recited Elul through Sukkot. Adonai Orivi Shimimi Ra, Adonai Maoz Mayachayu. Adonai Orivi Shimimi Ra. Achachal Timet Adonai Otavake. Middle of page 248. We conclude on page 250 with Yigdal. <laughs> 